Welcome to another edition of the SSC TV3 News. We are more than news. We also televise programs, events, and archives that are the lifeblood of our community. This is Thursday, April the 12th. I am Jeffrey Lyon, your host, and these are the features that will be on our show today. First off, an interview with Amy Clausen, the founder, the coach, and choreographer of the Tiger Color Guard. And then a history of the Color Guard, followed by a grocery store update. We televised this program live at 11 a.m. Tuesday and Friday. It is also recorded and uploaded to YouTube right after the show. If you cannot watch us live, you can still watch the show at your convenience at sanylandcenter.org. If you have news, public service announcements, or programs that need to be covered, come by the studio at 110 East 3rd or send us an email at ssctv3 at gmail.com. We can accommodate those wishing to appear live on the show, those wishing to make a pre-recorded studio video, or those wishing video coverage on location. At this time, we have a short video featuring some of the sponsors that make this program possible. Alright, at this time we will have a video detailing the history of the Tiger Keller Guard. Um. This is a flagpole. This is a flag. They go together and they work like this. From its simple beginning in the fall of 2013 to the spring of 2018, the St. John High School Color Guard flag team has to date wowed its audiences with 42 programs and 27 unique routines, ranging from pop to patriotic. This high energy team is the brainchild of Amy Clausen. To fully understand the essence of this unique group, we need to take a closer look at this spitfire of a coach and choreographer to discover where her mix of novel technique and flair for the dramatics came from. Her introduction to flags came in 1991 in Osborne, Kansas, and although it was basically marching band centered, her love of this sport of the arts was born. Continuing on from Osborne, while still in high school, she participated in flags and played the flute at the High Plains Band Camp at Fort Hayes University. In college, she was a vocal major with performance capabilities on both flute and piano, which enabled her to perform with the Fort Hayes Marching Band on the mallet instruments. She also performed in numerous operas at both Fort Hayes University and Wichita State University. Since her beginning team members were not acquainted with the dramatic flag style, she took them to Dayton, Ohio for a two-day immersion in the best of the best the annual Winter Guard International Competition. These performances were not only technically inspiring, but also emotionally moving as they evoked simultaneously wows and tears. Her mix of music, theater, and flags now delivers something new and refreshing to the citizens of St. John, Kansas. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us in front of City Hall, the St. John High School Tiger Color Guard.
What's next? Who knows? But you can bet it will be worth watching, because on any given day, you can see her marching around the room with a pole, or a broom if necessary, blending music, mood, and motion into something magic. It's okay. All right, hello. Today we have Amy Clausen, the founder, coach, and choreographer of the Tiger Guard. Welcome. Thank you. So, how did you get started in Color Guard? That goes back to high school, my junior year in high school. Um, the school that I was attending, Osborne, had a flag team and tried out for that, made it, and fell in love with it. So, kind of followed it, um, did some classes at band camp and learned more about it and obviously graduated from high school and didn't have the opportunity in college, but uh, that's how I got started with it. All right. Um, so how did Tiger Color Guard get started? That's a good question. Um, Mr. Cutright's second year as a band director with the St. John High School and Junior High Band, he asked me if I would be interested in coaching it. He wanted a more structured, um, con cohesive unit that he wanted for them. So I said, yeah, I'd be delighted to do that. So we opened it up to junior high as well as high school, and I had six young ladies came forward said we'd be interested in, in starting that and so that's literally how tiger color guard was born awesome so how long have you been coaching this is my fifth year coaching started out with junior high then it was a blend of junior high high school and now it's all high school okay um so who all is on the team all right i've got four seniors Taylor Clark, Alexis Moss, Ramsey McVeigh, Julia Taylor, and I have five juniors, uh, Paige Doran, Shayla Garcia, Jaden Reed, Brittany Schrag, and Melissa Williamson. So then how often do you perform? That depends on how many opportunities we have. We take every opportunity that is presented to us, but in any given year they do at least seven different performances and sometimes they're the similar routines we repeat them and sometimes there are six or seven brand new ones. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So who creates these routines? The routines for Tiger Color Guard are created solely by me. So I write them um, everything from figuring out which flags I want to use, which costumes I want to use, to all of the moves that are used and I pick the music. Sometimes, there have been a couple instances where we've done it together, the team said, hey, we'd really like to use this piece of music. But for the most part, it's been my choice on the music. And then uh, there have actually been a handful of costume pieces that my mother and I have personally sewn in order to come up with a more cost-effective way to do that many different costume pieces for that many different routines. Wow. So. Speaking of cost, you know, how do you fund this? Cause this is... Fundraisers. Um, we don't have a budget, so everything that we've ever done from the very first poles that we needed, flags that we needed, first uniforms that we needed, they have raised every penny they've ever needed. Wow. Yeah, we've got a lot of family support too. It's actually the family's donations and my personal donations, Mr. Cutright's donations that have kept this team going. And that's what allows us to have their awards presentation at the end of the year. These girls work so hard. They have invested heart, soul, blood, tears, broken pinkies, black eyes, split lips, you name it. And they deserve to be recognized too. Wow. So we have a, an awards banquet that's just for them at the end of the year. And I thought football had its injuries. <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, potential injury to this sport while you're learning it. Oh, yeah, man. So... You know, can you tell us about your upcoming trip to WGI and what is WGI? All right, well, WGI stands for Winter Guard International. During the year, um, the flag teams are referred to as Color Guard, which basically just means they're an accompaniment to either a band or a, a drum corps. But when they are in the off season and it's just about the guard, they're called Winter Guard. Winter Guard International is the Olympics for this sport. It is the best in the world. Over 350 teams will be competing that will be watching this weekend at Dayton, Ohio to pick the absolute best of the best. 
Wow. Uh, they combine not just flags, there are several different pieces of equipment. There's also elements of dance, which includes acrobatics. So there's a lot of agility, physical strength, and unbelievable listening uh, ability to stay within rhythm with each other. And it can come down to a thousandth of a point as to who wins first and who wins second. It's extremely competitive, extremely engaging, and absolutely beautiful to watch. Wow. I, wow. I, that's incredible. I mean, it's just like, I mean, you kind of think, I mean, when you watch some of this stuff, it's like, okay, that looks, uh, that looks a bit difficult, but, you know, but then when you actually hear the background, it's like, yeah, yeah what? I mean, These athletes, they don't do anything else. They don't double sport. They don't participate in drama. They don't participate in extracurricular activities. This is what they do. They will literally spend hours just learning the dance portion before they ever pick up a piece of equipment. And then it's hours and hours and hours mastering the moves with that equipment. And then it's learning the music and how it all comes together. And then it's hours and hours together to get the timing just perfectly right. And that's with the professional teams. Yes. Well, you know, with ours is the same way. I mean, we'll, we'll put the routine together, we'll spend hours learning it, and then it's hours polishing and perfecting it because one wrong release with a piece of equipment and you have a broken hand. So you have got to be careful, really have your mind on what you're doing and make sure that you don't just practice till you get it right. Practice it till you don't sure. get it wrong. So why is it well, I mean, that's actually really incredible. So why is it called the sports of arts? I mean, it, it's kind of obvious why I think. Um, the, whoever it is that coined that phrase, I would dearly love to meet them someday because it's the most perfect description of this particular activity. You have the kind of agility and upper body strength, the kind of musculature that's necessary for athletes. But unlike athletes, these athletes are musicians and artists. Everything they do has to fit the music, has to fit the theme. They have to be dancers. They have to be acrobatics. And then, unlike traditional sports where it comes down to how many goals you've made or how many baskets you've scored, it has to be no drops with the flag, no drops with the rifle, no drops with the saber or the air blade. All the dancers have to be in sync. They have to hit their marks at the right time. And that's where the scores come from. The whole team is responsible for the overall score not just one or two players. What's an air blade? An air blade? It looks kind of like a rifle, but it's actually hollowed out, so it's about the same weight as a saber, but it moves in the air like a rifle. So it's a combination of the two. It's a really cool piece of equipment. Huh. So when you say rifle, is it like a legit rifle? Like it's a wooden rifle, roughly the same weight and size as a rifle would be. Now, I know your, your military color guards and the soldiers, as they're learning to present arms, much the same commands that we use, do use real ones. Wow. So, um, will we see more of the team in the future? We are saying goodbye to our four seniors next month, and then our five juniors will remain, and they will perform as often as they can to take advantage of their senior year. And I don't know what the color guard future will look like for St. John High School. I hope that they keep it alive. And I hope that my girls dabble in this in college and maybe even step into the coaching arena someday. Well, all right, because one more thing I was kind of thinking, so what grades is this open to? Because I know you said seniors and juniors. Is that kind of the only one? Um, I wouldn't, if I was going to start a new team, I wouldn't go smaller or younger than eighth grade. The smallest flagpoles are five feet in height. So you just don't have the size or the musculature for younger students really to get involved prior to about your eighth grade freshman year. Um, there are schools that have, you know, middle school um, athletes that compete in this sport, but it's usually when the middle school is six, seven, and eight. That makes sense. Yeah. Now your WGI athletes, they can be any age from middle school to middle age. Wow. Yeah, they break them into categories, first of all based on ability, and then second of all based on age groups, so that they're relatively competitive. Well, man, that is just some incredible stuff right there. It's... 
Well, okay. I don't have too much words for that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, wow. I, is wow, wow is basically the best I can yeah. come up with. Well, if I would encourage anyone that has the opportunity to speak with these young ladies. They're incredible athletes. They've, they've really built an incredible program, and uh, they deserve to be told that they do a good job and that you enjoy what you see. All right. The construction of the grocery store is moving right along. The footings are poured in and the forms are in place for the concrete floor. If you would like to see the progress, you will need to take a drive by because SSC TV3 will not be bringing any more video updates. Sorry. Don't shoot me, I'm just a messenger. As news director for SSC TV3, it is my objective to bring news, activities, programs, and archives to the citizens of St. John. The new grocery store is a major activity, and as of last month, I started bringing video updates of its progress to this community. However, after acquiring legal advice, this coverage will be discontinued. Mm -hmm. All right, school calendar time. Today, there is a state large group music festival at Pratt and 2 p.m. junior high track at Stafford. Tomorrow, high school track pre-state will not be going to WSU, but will be going to Spearville instead. All right, junior senior play will not be this weekend. It will be the weekend of the 28th and 29th. And it's going to be great, guys. Public service announcements, the rabies clinic uh, that was postponed will be Monday, April 16th at 5 p.m. Cats and dogs are supposed to be registered with the city. Today, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. will be the grand opening of the Heart of Kansas Family Health Care Facility. It is located at 412 Grand Avenue in Stafford. Stafford County Health and Wellness Fair will be April 16th through the 19th. Information booths will be at the Stafford Schools on Monday, April 16th. Blood draws will be the following locations. Tuesday, April 17th at the Stafford County Hospital from 7 a.m. until noon. Wednesday, April 18th at the Maxville School from 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. And Thursday, April 19th at the Stafford County Health Department from 7 a.m. until noon. Wednesday, April 18th from 9 a.m. until noon is the USD 350 Community, Day, Community Service Day. Work requests may be picked up at the city office, Sandy Land Shepherd Center, Sunflower Senior Center, the USD 350 District Office, and the High School Office. <clears throat> if you have items that need to be announced on TV3 and or placed on a computerized bulletin board, Send them to ssc at tv3 at gmail.com. Join us again on Cable Channel 3 next Tuesday at 11 a.m. and anytime on the internet at sandylandcenter.org. To see more of our videos, go to YouTube and search for Sandyland Shepherd Center. Ugh. That's how it happened April 12, 2018. Thanks for watching.